My name is Jeremiah Gress, and I grew up in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and moved to Cedar Park, Texas in 2007. Um, if it's okay, I want to tell you my story, uh, just to glorify God and what He's done in it thus far and what I think He'll do in the future. Uh, in Oklahoma City, I lived in a neighborhood where my single mother fit right in. Uh, I saw my fair share of shame and brokenness uh, in that time on 115th Street. Fortunately, my mother knew the Lord, uh, and she clung to him in the midst of the storm that we seem to always be going through. Uh, unfortunately, that same reason was why I was so confused when her life ended abruptly in 2007. Uh, after she got in a car, rash, car crash, I felt that he had taken her from me, uh, especially as it seemed like her life was coming back together again. Uh, it, it, it appeared to me at that time that the coming of her new job, ending of her old and abusive relationship, and the dawning of her new joy uh, must have been as good as it gets. So then why did her life end? And that question haunted me for years um, as, as I just continue to seek to fill my void with uh, a number of vices of the world. Um, and while living with my aunt and uncle in Cedar Park after her death, I felt myself uh, as a newcomer to a foreign community uh, so different from that one on 115th Street. And as I adjusted to the quiet streets of the sleepy suburb of Cedar Park, it seemed like my flesh longed for the wild culture, uh, that more urban community in Oklahoma. Uh, and I began to identify myself uh, with with my success in athletics, my ability to charm women, and drugs and alcohol. Uh, and in that time, my heart was, was constantly graced by the call of the Lord uh, as He called my name uh, in the midst of my sin. But I just clung to that sin that was distracting me from the pain and the shame that I've been through. Uh, but praise God, one day it all came crashing down. Around my sophomore and junior year of high school, I tore my ACL multiple times in a row. Uh, and that kind of made me lose all my college football prospects, all my Division I suitors. Um, and I found myself close to being apprehended by the police after a party one night. Uh, and at, at that time, out of fear, I turned to the God that I knew was near to me uh, for help, and I vowed to stay away from that stuff uh, if he would just deliver me. And I found that I was really only hurting and disrespecting the young women, uh, the people I loved, and myself as I used girls uh, for what they could give me, not what I could give them. And so after all these things began to fall and begin to fail me, uh, I finally heard his call, and I finally heard it clearly. And after letting go of those, those vices and not, of, of those devices that were holding me down and sin and shame, I let go of my whole life. And the Lord took that, uh, and He filled me with His Spirit, came near to me, and revealed to me the glory of His presence. Uh, and what could I compare it to? Nothing. We, uh, we search everything in the world and test the pleasures of the world, but it seems that nothing will ever compare. Uh, none could match the joy and the pleasure of His presence and that knowledge of the Almighty God of Heaven that I saw for the first time. Uh, and that is gifted to us who believe through our Lord Jesus Christ and His death and resurrection. Um, and now I believe that people need to know this. Up to that moment on, I knew it deep down in my heart that I was meant to tell them. Uh, and my joy is to tell them. And so I followed his lead to the University of Texas where he provided me with a full scholarship so that I could study biochemistry and religious studies there. Um, and instantly as I started school there, and, jumped into ministry and made friends and uh, began to live out my faith on that campus. My heart longed for something like seminary where I would just steadily learn of his glories all day long. Uh, but I knew that I, I had something else, that there was another plan for me, so I pushed towards medicine. And I saw that I didn't just want to become a doctor, but I want to become a healer. 
uh, a man who would love people first, then heal their body second, all so that he may point them to the one that promises to heal and love their soul. Uh, in my time at UT, I found that I wanted all my time to be the Lord's. I joined a Christian fraternity, got deeply involved in the ministry of Young Life, and immersed myself into my new church, the Austin Stone. And I, at one point, I made the football team and thought that my dream of playing Division One football had finally come true, uh, yet the Lord showed me otherwise. He showed me that he had much greater, much greater glories for me to be a part of, uh, that football was, was hardly anything in the grand scheme of things. And after having to quit football, uh, I was able to dive deep into loving my peers at school and fighting and, and pleading to share the gospel at the inner city high school of Reagan, uh, where I was doing I was doing young life and trying to minister to them in any way that I could. Um, but little did I know what God was about to do with all this, uh, where He was going to take it. And on campus, He began to increase my mental capacity and understanding, and started using me as a light in the secular classrooms that I walked through every day. Uh, where God was steadily attacked through philosophy, academic study of the Bible, and materialistic scientific theories. Uh, and I began to form deep relationships with an overwhelming amount of my classmates, professors, and teaching assistants uh, in my religious studies and biochemistry classes. And he used me to get to know them, uh, to, to feel their hearts, uh, to know them as people, and, and see their needs and brokenness so that I could share his light and truth um, as I fought to reveal it through the philosophy, science, and reason that they knew so well. Uh, and I, I must have spent months of my life straight researching and writing papers, uh, getting to know my professors in one-on-one -on -one settings, uh, and trying to persuade them of his glory uh, through the things that they already knew. And almost every day, I would finish my attempts to illuminate his glory in the classroom and then I would drive over to Reagan and hang out with these high school guys who I love so much uh, and, and reminded me so deeply of myself at their age. Uh, and they became my younger brothers and, and I their older brother. And, uh, I spent countless hours in, in fervent prayer uh, just begging God that he'd reveal himself to them and uh, that they would take a hold of him and follow. And I got to tell you the truth, he's done it. Um, not always in the way I want but in the way I know that he desires, that's in accordance with his will. And though many of these friends struggle to commit to following him, I know, I know many of them have seen him. And I trust that the ones whom he wants to know and that he, he has decided will know him, um, they'll follow him one day. They'll, they'll find his hand. They'll, they'll feel their way towards him as it discusses an ax, and they'll see him. They'll come to know him deeply. Um, and that's been the story of my the relationships that God's given me, uh, not just with high school kids, not just with my peers and my, my teachers, but also with the very random people I've gotten to know in the community, um, from baristas to homeless men, um, from people my age to 90-year-old to women. Uh, I've had so many random conversations that my friends always make fun of me for where I've gotten to see people's hearts and get a feel for them. and. I try to point them to the one that will heal them, uh, and it's been amazing. Uh, I really have enjoyed getting to know uh, the, the homeless guys that live near and around campus, and I get to do that with them, and um, I've also just really enjoyed getting to know those young life kids, and uh, I just bring all that together to see that God has given me this gift uh, to converse with people and dig deeply to know them. Uh, regardless of who they are and what we have in common. And uh, as that all comes together, it helps me see what his plan is for me. And all that's just to say that in my time at UT, God's taught me how to love people, love his creations, and dig deep within their hearts so that I can know them, so that I may speak to their hearts so that they may know him. Uh, and I will certainly push to do the same in medical school and then use my skills that I obtained from medical school uh, as an emergency surgeon so that I can proclaim his truth to those who are on the brink of death. And it is as I know now that death, just as my mother's, is, uh, is pretty much always one of two things. Passage into eternal glory, free from the grip of sin and shame, 
for a passage into an eternity far away from the essence of goodness, uh, the one who our heart longs for. And I know that my mother's was the first. It was the former. And uh, for all my patients, I hope to dedicate my life to giving them a second chance so that they may find the knowledge of God and eternal life that leads to the first and pulls them, rips them from the second. Uh, and, and I'm asking now um, and hoping that you would support me through medical school so that I may learn to save lives in order to assist our Lord in saving souls. Because uh, that's what he's put me here for. And, and that's not a requirement. Um, that's not a burden. That's a gift he's given to me. Uh, that's a yoke of my Lord and Savior. And uh, he's the one who I'll follow regardless of this scholarship, regardless of medical school, regardless of the conditions. Um, that's what I'm on earth to do. And I pray that that would all glorify him and it would change the face of medicine as I uh, seek to know people deeply and push them to him not just heal their bodies, uh, but point them to the one that heals their soul. Thank you so much.